make sure that uh, uh, we can give you a bag and uh, welcome you. Any visitors with us this morning, you have to wave your hand. We're not going to make you sing a song. Welcome. That's it. That's it. Easy. There's another one. Welcome. Just make sure you get a bag. Welcome at the bag. Can you somebody's talking to me in sign language? I'm not good at that. <laughs> oh, how many? About uh, eight. Uh, yeah, about two. Two or, two or three. At least two. All right. Um, so, uh, what do we have? We're, we're going to meet again on Sunday at 10 a.m. So it goes all weekend, and then we meet again at 6. So uh, if you're new with us today, come on back. And uh, we, uh, we're, we're having coffee today, but we'll have uh, coffee and treats after the service on Sunday and, uh, in the morning and evening service. Uh, there's a game, family games night coming up, Saturday, April 29th at uh, 6 p.m. here at the fam uh, fam Fellowship. Oh, my word. The Family Fellowship. The Family Fellowship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so bring your favorite snack. App to share. Uh, there's a sign up sheet at the back, so sign up on and come on out and have a, enjoy a family's game night with us. Uh, page two, so much here. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, kids camp is coming up Monday, August 21st. So uh, that's if you have kids and you don't know what to do with them for the week, you can sign them up for kids camp. And uh, and also we have a Georgina Family Fun Fair, July 22nd, uh, between 1 and 5. They're at the back door there and at the back entrance, there's an announcement board. It's all there, all the details. And the, the, I think Melody wants to know if there's anybody who wants to help with Kids Camp. Kids Camp, yeah, we need volunteers for sure. Okay. Can I just add something to it? Yeah, so the Saturday after Easter, so next Saturday and the following Saturday in the morning at 10 o'clock at Walmart here, we're going to hand out some kids camp flyers, so anybody that would like to help me do that, we'll announce it more specifically, but uh, the flyers are ready, and we can put them all into the car windshield, supposedly that was uh, the best way of last year, so um, we're going to do it two Saturdays in a row. Very good. Excellent. Um, so during the week, we have all regular uh, scheduled things going on, just to let you know, Wednesday Bible study, we're starting a new series. Um, just finished the Holy Spirit. We're going into our identity in Christ. So uh, starting brand new. I think on Sunday we'll be giving us some sheets on some of the topics that we'll be doing. So uh, if you're thinking, well, I don't want to start part way through. Well, starting this Wednesday. So come on out and be a part of that. That's it. Everything else is there. We're going to open in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. And uh, we just... Uh, Thank you for your sacrifice for us, Lord God. And so uh, we just want to thank you and praise you for that. Being everything that we do here today and, and throughout the weekend as we think about what you did for us. And uh, so we just thank you for that and uh, give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's sing together. I'd like to read from Ruth 23, starting at verse 44. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, that was a soldier, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. So, for those who may not know, the curtain of the temple, it says it was torn. That was God telling us that now everyone is welcome to come to God through Jesus. Not only could the holiest priest who prepared himself perfectly to go into what was called the Holy of Holies. Only he could go in. Now we are all welcomed into God's throne room. 
through the blood of Jesus, through his death and resurrection, our sins can be forgiven. And when we trust Jesus like that, he welcomes us into his throne room. We serve a loving, loving God who wants us to be close to him and who made a way for us to be close to him. So we're just looking forward to focusing all our attention on Jesus this morning and worshiping him together. Let's sing together, Behold Him.
Seigneur. church um, as a follower of Christ my whole life, but that sermon series really brought to life what that meant, how God has mercy on me um, through what Christ has done, and um, the Lord gave me this, these words and this melody to express how wonderful that is. And so my prayer this morning is that all of our hearts would be singing his praise for what he has done. It's called Jesus, You Alone. Thank you. 
yourself that I might be free. We praise you this morning, Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's funny to watch Jeff when Jenny plays the song that she wrote. He's sitting there, he's so smiling, he's so proud. That was beautiful. Thank you. Welcome. Hey. Are you all here just because it's a holiday and you had nothing better to do? Yeah, that's, that's terrible. That's terrible. I met, the, I met the neatest little guy. He's nine years old. And, and he was standing in my office with me and and he's looking at my earring and he says, why do you have a T in your ear? <laughs> and, and it was cute at the time. And then I thought, that poor guy doesn't even know what a cross is. And you know, we're living in a generation of people who don't know what a cross is. Everybody's wearing them. It's jewelry. It's a fancy T. They don't know what that cross means. Good Friday. Well, what a strange name. We celebrate a crucifixion, the worst way anybody could die. Good Friday. But you know, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. <laughs> and Sunday is when Christ rises from the dead. So yes, he dies, but it's a beautiful death. He takes our sin upon himself, and then he rises again. From the dead, so we're going to celebrate that on Sunday. Do you have a video queued up for me? Oh, good. This is my favorite little track here. Check it out. Oh, it's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betrayed. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilified. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denied. But they don't know that Sunday's a coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat by Jesus. They roll him in scars. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's coming. It's right. See Jesus walking the cow. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirits burning. But you see, it's only right. Sunday's coming. It's right, the world's win. People are sin, and evil's grin. It's right, the soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's right, but let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's right. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only right. Sunday's coming. It's right. He's hanging on the cross. Healing forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody see? Oh, it's right. But Sunday's come. It's right. The earth trembles. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has come. And Satan just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus. 
Jesus is there. A soldier stands God. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's fried. It is only fried. Suddenly is a cup. Sunday is coming. I was talking to somebody and, and they were saying, they were saying, oh, we went to this, this church and, and, and it was huge and it was all these people and, and there was lights and there was all kinds of background and there was smoke and there was all, and he said, it is so great to be part of this cool family of God. It's it's so great that Christians can be so cool. It's, uh, you young kids don't know what that means, like really. Um, <laughs> but you know, sometimes I feel that we get all caught up in the church stuff and we get caught up in the programs and we get caught up in all the things that we're doing and we forget who Jesus is. Did Jesus go around thinking, yeah, baby, I'm the leader of the most coolest people in the world? I want to read to you from Isaiah 53. This is who Isaiah says Jesus is. He was despised and rejected by men. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hid their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. We didn't hold him in high respect. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. That's, that's our wrongdoings. He was crushed for our iniquities. That's our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. He was abused, beatings, death, chastisements. And with his wounds we are healed spiritually. All we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the sins of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he didn't open his mouth. He didn't talk back. He didn't scream for his life. He didn't fight at all. Like a lamb led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that's before his shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Does that sound like Jesus was the coolest guy in the world? Or does that just make you want to go, wow, does Jesus ever love us? He didn't hang out with cool people. He hung out with the poor, the oppressed, the confused, the hurting, the broken, the prostitutes, the drunks, the addicts. That's who he hung out with. Is that a cool crowd? People didn't look at Jesus and say, wow, I wish I could hang out with him. No, no, that's not true at all. Look at Philippians 2, 5 to 8. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself. He put aside his godly attributes by taking on the form of a servant, taking on the form of a person, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. I don't know if we think about this. God is, Jesus is God, he's God the Son, and, and, and God sits on his throne. That's, that's a metaphor. He's, he's in control of all things. He's sovereign over all things. This God, who is the creator of all things, comes to earth 
and becomes a human being like us. Just so that he can die for us. Because we deserve death. He doesn't want us to die eternally. He wants us to have eternal life. And he comes to earth and he becomes just like us, taking on the very form of a servant. And he dies this cruel, cruel death. So that we don't have to die. If you were the king, the king of kings, the creator of all things, would you do that? We can't even understand the love of God. Why would he do that? Oh yeah, he created us and, and he loves us. But he could have just done what he did in the days of Noah. Just wipe everybody out and, and, and start again with just, just a couple of righteous people. But he doesn't do that. The sad part to that story is that he is going to do that one day. The good news is he's waiting. He wants none to perish. He's waiting for all of us to get our hearts right with God so that we don't have to have eternal destruction. We can have eternal life. The God of the universe gave up his throne. He came down here, took on the nature, the very nature of man. A God who could be everywhere at one time gave that up. He took on a human form. Now he can only be in one place at one time. A God who knows all things, set that aside, took on a human brain so that he doesn't know all things. A God who could move a mountain, all powerful, almighty, set that aside and took on a human body. Do we understand that at all? He's still God. He, those are still his attributes. They still belong to him. He's not using them right now. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, they're still using those attributes, but God the Son has given up those attributes, set them aside so that he could be in human flesh. And when he died, he died as a human. When he hung on that cross, do you think he wasn't scared? Do you think he was, oh, he's God, it's no big deal, it didn't hurt him at all. Look at, look at this story here. Where's uh, Luke 22, 41 to 44? And Jesus withdrew from them about a stone throw away. He knelt down and he prayed. This is, this is just before he was killed. And he said, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. This plan that God had worked out, remove it from me. I've changed my mind. But then he says, nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. And that, that's the prayer that we pray. God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want God's will to be done. And so did Jesus. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. He was so weak. He was so scared. An angel appeared, a messenger of God came and, and gave him strength to get through this. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. He prayed so hard, all the, 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 the things in his head, the veins, the capillaries, whatever you doctor people call those things, they, they burst and, and blood dropped to the ground. Can you imagine? He's in agony. Jesus in his humanness was just as messed up as we would have been. He's dying. Nobody likes dying. Nobody likes pain. Oh, but he's Jesus. He's God. Yes, he's God, but he set aside those attributes. He's 100% human hanging on the cross. He's scared. He's lonely. 
Do we understand the agony that he went through? I've heard people say, oh, it was a breeze for him. He's God. 100% man. Still 100% God. But he set aside his attributes. And he died a lonely death on a cross. And when he died on that cross, he took our sin upon himself. The sin of the world he took upon himself. That means that God's wrath, God's anger that was supposed to be poured out on us, God turned and poured it out on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, it's not just the physical part. Now he's at odds with the Father. The Father's pouring out his anger. When Jesus said, take this cup away from me. The Old Testament makes it clear that that cup is the cup of God's wrath. God is pouring out his anger upon Jesus Christ. I, I hope we realize the suffering that was involved here. It's huge. It's beyond anything we can understand. Somebody said to me, I, I don't know if I told you this, because it, it's almost comical to me, but the guy says, because I don't understand God, I'm not going to accept it. How many things in life do you really understand? Really? If a black cow eats green grass, why does it produce white milk? That's always haunted me. And when a cow locks, does milk come out of his nose? <laughs> we don't even understand cows. And we're going to say, well, because I don't understand Jesus, I'm not going to accept you drink white milk. You're not going to understand Jesus. You're not going to understand to the full extent the pain and the suffering that he went through. You're not going to understand that because you've never been there. You know what's the worst thing you can say at a funeral? When you go to a funeral and you go up to the person who's lost a loved one and you say, listen, I understand what you're going through because, you know, my husband died six years ago. You don't have any clue what that person's going through. We're all different. We don't react the same. We don't handle things the same. You don't even understand that. I was an addict. I understand exactly what you're going through. No, you don't. You don't know my personality. You don't know how I'm handling this. You don't understand you have some idea, maybe. I have some idea about what Jesus is going through. Just some idea. But I don't understand it. And I don't understand why he would die for me. Does anybody here know me? If you know me, you can go, yeah, we don't understand it either. God loves us so much. He died for us. But there's so much more involved in that. There's so much more involved in that. And the beauty, we're going to talk on Sunday, we're going to talk about Jesus coming out of that grave alive. Hallelujah. We don't serve a dead God. I was, I was asking a Buddhist just a while ago, I said, um, have you been to Buddha's grave? He said, oh, yes, yes, holy place, holy place. I said, I'd like to go to Jesus' grave, but there isn't one. <laughs> He's alive. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. That's incredible. I don't want to keep you here long because y'all have roasts in the oven and stuff. You have to make chocolate eggs with bunnies and stuff, whatever that is. Well, let's review this very quickly. So, We've all sinned. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. There's not a person in this building that's not a sinner. Don't worry about if he stole something or he murdered or something. <laughs> We've all rejected Jesus Christ. That's our sin. We've all rejected Jesus Christ. At some point in our life, we rejected Jesus Christ. We're all sinners and we can't save ourselves. So God the Son... God the Son, 
came to earth and became a human being so that he could walk holy on earth and remain sinless. He's sinless. We're, we're all sinners. He's sinless. We're all sinners. Yeah, even Mary. We're all sinners. Jesus was the only one. The Bible said Jesus is the only person who was sinless. So he walked for 33 and a half years on this earth and remained sinless. Why? So that he could die in our place. A sinless, an innocent man hangs on the cross and dies for us so that he can take our sin upon himself. Now, he doesn't just take our sin upon himself and leave it at that. He then turns around and puts his righteousness upon us. So now the roles are reversed. We now have his righteousness and he has our sin. Who does that? He did. Now we are counted righteous. If we accept what Christ did on the cross and we believe that he rose again on the third day, we are now counted righteous. Just as Abraham put faith in God, he put faith in what God said and did. It was counted to him as righteousness. So it's counted to us as righteousness if we believe. If we believe God, not if we believe in God. If we believe God, it's counted to us as righteousness. So because I'm righteous, when I die, I stand before God and he judges me and he goes, hmm. That's interesting. I can't see any sin in you. All I see is the righteousness of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, come on in. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, he didn't see any of that. That was great. <laughs> Nothing I did. Nothing I did. It's what he did. Yeah. I can't earn my way into heaven. I can't do anything to save myself. I need a rescuer. And that's the same with all of us. We all need a rescuer. If we can say that we're a sinner and we can't save ourselves, it's hard to say that. I'm a sinner. It's hard to say because we're all so prideful and we say, well, I'm not really a sinner. We're going to try and justify it. I'm not really a sinner. I, I didn't mean to poke that kid with the stick in the, in the eye. Did you guys do that? No? Um, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I need Jesus Christ. I need, I need him to rescue me. And I put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ. And he saves me. It's really quite a simple story, isn't it? We make it out to be so complex. Because we try to figure it out. We try to understand it. You can't understand God. His ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. You can't understand him. Well, I'm not going to put my faith in something I don't understand. Oh, really? Okay. Do you understand how the engine works in your car? I guess you'll be leaving it in the parking lot today. Give me another example. Gravity. What? Gravity. Gravity. You don't understand gravity? What's wrong with you? I've jumped out the building. Yep, that's it. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it doesn't work. Remember that, okay? Always think, white you know. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this, this time. <laughs> Good Friday. Without the death of Christ, we wouldn't have the resurrection of Christ. Which means we would have no hope for eternal life. Everything that we talk about, everything that we do, the songs we sing would all be foolishness if Jesus didn't die for us and if he didn't rise again from the dead. And so we thank you on this weekend, a weekend that we can make about Easter bunnies and chocolate eggs and turkey. I don't know. Forgive us. Forgive us. This is a wonderful weekend when we remember what Christ has done for us. And Lord, I pray that each of us would remember this every day, not just on this weekend. This is so important. So important. 
Everybody stand. Everybody stand. You've been sitting too long. I want to ask you, if you're here today, I don't know everybody here. If you're here today and, and you're, you're, you're just hearing this story maybe for the first time, or maybe you've heard it before, but you've never understood that you're not supposed to understand. Whatever that means. If you're here today and you want, you want to put your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ. Because you realize what he's done. What he's done for you. Because he loves you immensely. If you're here today and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's not put that off. You want to know without a doubt that when you die, you will have eternal life with Jesus Christ. And you want to know without a doubt that while you're living here on earth, you will have the power of God within you so that you can make it through this crazy life. And you will have hope and you'll have peace and you'll have joy. If you're here today and, and, and that's what you want, Jesus is offering it to you. That's why he died. That's why he rose again. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to swallow your pride and walk up here to the front so that we can pray for you. That's all. We just want to pray for you. When you walk up to the front, what you're doing is you're saying, I know that I am a sinner and I can't save myself. I know that I need Jesus Christ to rescue me. I believe he died for me to take away my sin. I believe he rose again from the dead to give me the hope of eternal life. I want joy and peace. I want love. I want Christ. If that's you, you're here today, and you're saying that, God's, God's pulling on your heart. I want you to come forward and let us pray for you. Now listen, while, while you're thinking about it, if you're afraid, and I get it, if you're afraid to come forward by yourself, just grab the hand of the person next to you and say, please come with me. And they would love to do that. Is God talking to you? Come forward. Don't put this off. Do it now. You don't know how long you're going to live. You only have a chance while you're alive. When you're dead, you can't make many decisions. In fact, none. Jesus is talking to you. Come forward quick. Don't put it off. Is it scary? Is it a scary thing? It's a wonderful thing. It's not a scary thing. Most people in this room have done this already. You're not going to be the first. And you, hopefully, you won't be the last. God's talking to you. You know it. You feel it. You feel the Holy Spirit just talking to you. Father, we thank you for this time together. And we thank you, Lord, for the way that your Holy Spirit is speaking to us. For those, Lord, that you're calling to yourself, I pray in Jesus' name that even as they walk out into the parking lot, they would still feel that call of God upon their hearts. That they would want to give their life to you. They just want to surrender to you. Oh God, we've tried to run our own lives and it hasn't been working well. We need the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Work in our hearts, work in our minds. And Father, as everybody leaves here today and they go to their parties on the weekend, their, their Eastern party, they would Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that we would spend this time with boldness, telling others about the good news about Jesus Christ. That's what this weekend is about, not the Easter Bunny. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. Thank you for your sacrifice. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are going to sing some beautiful hymns on this Good Friday.
Joyful all the day. Okay, joyful. 